Hello, my name is Benjamin Hart. I'm an American attorney and the managing director of Integrity Legal here in Bangkok, Thailand. In this video, we're going to be discussing the SB1 specifically in the context of maintenance of residence in the United States. So first of all, let me just preface this video by saying we have another video that discusses the details of the SB1 specifically on this channel. I recommend checking that out. But that in that video, just real quickly, the SB1 is a visa that's designed for those who could fall into the trap of presumption of loss of residence, presumption of abandonment of residence in the United States by coming back because they've been abroad too long. Those folks can seek an SB1 visa to sort of allay those issues, put those issues to bed before even returning to the United States. I urge those who are interested in more information regarding the SB1 to check out the other video on this channel specific to that, um, to that travel document in detail. What I'm talking about here today are issues pertaining to maintenance of residence because this comes up a fair amount. Um, I get a lot of questions actually with respect to presumption of maintenance of residence in the United States. And here's basically the breakdown of how, how I like to sort of look at it. Um, well, first of all, the underlying issue is this. If one remain, if even if one has a green card status, lawful permanent residence, if one just stays in the United States for a prolonged period of time, forever in, in permanent residence status, that's fine. There's no issue there. It's when one travels abroad that the presumption of abandonment of residence can be raised. And when can the and it's not going to be raised by taking a one week trip to Mexico on a cruise or taking a you know a, a month long vacation to Southeast Asia or wherever else somebody wants to go. What we're talking about here is prolonged periods of time. And USCIS itself, Department of Homeland Security and US Customs and Border Protection, um, the law as well and the regulations pertaining there too, are not overly clear as to at what point exactly in time presumption of residential abandonment kicks in, if you will. And for that reason, it's somewhat difficult for people, and they have a lot of questions, and people get uneasy. I, I totally understand it, especially where they have a loved one, um, a spouse or children, who are in lawful permanent resident status. And due to unforeseen issues in their lives, they, they get called overseas, or they go overseas, and then what they thought was going to be a two-week trip for business turns into a job that was unforeseen that you know results in a year and a half of physical presence outside the United States. Um, this is why the SB1 exists, first of all, is to deal with those folks that have fallen out of, uh, not fallen out, but have gone, gone so far time-wise that it really is possible that trying to get back in the United States, Customs and Border Protection may stop them and say, hey, what are you guys doing? you know, you've been abroad for six and a half years. I mean, are you a resident in the United States or are you not? That, that's, that's really where, what the question boils down to, if you will. Uh, the second thing with respect to this is trying to forestall it. So the SB1 can deal with uh, the back end where you've had an unforeseen event occur overseas that's prolonged one stay abroad and you go in to deal with that with an SB1, go check that out. Another way of dealing with this is by forestalling the problem or dealing with it on the front end by getting a reentry permit prior to leaving the United States. Reentry permits are issued for two years. It's kind of like a little passport book. It allows that person to be abroad uh, without raising the presumption of residential abandonment uh, during that two-year period, um, which is a way of forestalling it. There's another video that goes really deep into reentry permits on this on this uh, channel. I recommend those interested in that go over to see that video. Uh, but just getting into the residential maintenance thing, I have people, you know, ask me questions all the time. Well, you know, we want to spend time in Thailand, uh, but we also want to spend a significant chunk of time in the United States. I will say it is hard to delineate what's considered residential abandonment. A couple of months out of a given calendar year spent abroad, I don't think that that gets you there. To, to the presumption of residential abandonment. You know, years abroad, yeah. Where the line is, it is somewhat subjective on the part of the officer adjudicating these matters. But that being said, um, I think common sense can kind of prevail sometimes. You know, if you're 
maybe even thinking that this could be an issue, you really should be talking to an immigration professional such as myself or such as you know someone who's licensed and, and deals with U.S. immigration matters to go ahead and ascertain, look, this is sort of my circumstance. These are the outside possibilities. These are the more likely possibilities. You know, and an immigration attorney is going to be able to say, look, you know, under the circumstances, you might want to go ahead and think about a reentry permit or, you know, maybe you don't need it. You're not, eh, it's getting close to the line, but it's pretty clear that your residence is being maintained in the United States. You know, oftentimes um, other sort of tertiary evidence is good. Uh, things like maintaining a, a dwelling in the United States or, you know, continuing to be paid on shore in the United States. Those kinds of things, you know, can kind of show that, hey, yeah, I've been abroad, but, you know, my base, my residence remains the USA. Uh, I'm not trying to be purposely vague in this video, um, but what I did want to get to a point on was it's not, there's no clear lines, there's no bright line rule with, okay, day 448, you're within non-presumption of, of abandonment, but 449, it's presumed. That's not how it is. It's sort of a holistic approach, looks at the totality of the circumstances associated with one's both trip abroad and one's circumstances in the United States, I think, and they make, they make a determination sort of case by case, which can be frustrating, but that being said, there are ways to forestall the problem, and if one thinks that they've been abroad too long, there are ways to forestall it uh, with respect to going back in the United States, most notably the, FB, uh, the SB1 visa category.